he was going to go back to the station, he was going to stay there, sleep, and then he would be on his way, and he would make it home in time enough for us to go to church together. Okay. My day began, Rhonda, with my phone ringing and him on the other end saying, why didn't you wake me up? Mm. I, you know, and I was like, and I was in a deep sleep, and he should have been home by that time because it was 9 a.m., he overslept, I overslept, and so it didn't begin the way we had planned. And, and as a matter of fact, the part of the skit that we did is right after he gets home, uh, when you just made lunch and you're waiting for him to get in, and I think you mentioned that you hadn't seen him for about four days at that time, right? That is correct, yes, okay. because he was also working on a documentary, mm -hmm. and he was in and out of town. The uh, doc documentary was dealing with a lot of fatherless children because his passion was the foster youth and he was traveling around doing different uh, location shoots so no i did not see him for four days we would talk every day okay. but i did not see him for four days okay and so did everything feel the same to you when you saw john that day or was there something that happened that made things feel a little bit different for you than most days you know, it seemed like for the first time in our five and a half marriage, years of marriage, that the day, though, though it didn't start off the way we had hoped, it seemed like he was at home, and, but not just at home, but that everything was, was, was perfect. Even though I was upset with him in, on the inside, I believe the Holy Spirit was just telling me just to enjoy our time together. Okay. And so I did not want to say or do anything that would cause any type of friction between us. And so I just pretty much went with the flow. Okay. Okay, so you guys decide to go out to dinner, and you're at dinner. You just finished dinner. You're going to the car. What happens next? Well, one of the reasons why we left at the moment that we left is because John said we weren't going to have time to go see my mother, she had her birthday four days prior. Mm -hmm. I had already told her we would be coming, and it was our date night, but I did tell her that I would be coming by, and I did not want to disappoint her. So when he said we're not going to have time to see Mom, I rushed things. I told the waitress to please bring our bill so that we could leave. Okay. Not knowing that a whole uh, a, a, a war was going on on the outside of that restaurant, and it had started... It had started earlier in the day with uh, Aaron Dunn getting high on meth and deciding that he was going to go out and reap his blood of harvest. He was going to go out and kill people. So, of course, we didn't know that. Uh, we didn't know that that would be our last time together. But when we got on the outside of that door, Rhonda, it, um, man, it, it, it just seemed like the world had stopped. Mm -hmm. It was a Saturday night. It was dark outside. It was cold. But... It was utter silence. I didn't hear anything. I didn't see anything. My husband pulled out his phone, jumped on his phone, and when he did that, I ran and jumped in the car because I had the keys. He asked me to drive, and though it was our date night, I didn't want to drive, but I knew he would be driving all morning long in his news van, and so I said, sure. Okay. And so I had the keys, and I was in the car. Okay. So you got so, in the car. And John's outside of the car, leaning against the car, talking to his friend who you guys were going to go visit that evening, I suppose, as well, right? Yes, we were going to visit him second, and then we were going to visit Mom last. And then from there, we were going to go home, and he was going to get dressed and go on, off to work. Okay. So that was our plan. Before we got to the restaurant, just before we got there, he said, Honey, this is going to be a great year. I, it was like, you know, exhaling. It was like, wow. It was music to my ears because we had our, our struggles, we had our challenges, and to hear my husband say, this is going to be a great year, mm -hmm. I just knew that we were going to be, uh, everything was going to be downhill. We had, uh, we had, uh, he had made some commitments to me that he was going to do better in our marriage, and we were going to just um, really work hard on, on our marriage, and so I was just very hopeful. Okay. And so he's there, and Aaron Dunn walks up, and what happens? There's, I'm sitting in the car, not knowing what's going on. The car, car is turned on. I am waiting for him to get in the car. I hear his voice. He said, spoon, and then.
and he said, man, get that out of my face. And then I heard a pow. Well, I, the, the pow sounded like it was in the distance, and his friend and him, they used to joke back and forth. And so I thought when he said spoon, spoon made a, a, a joke, cracked a joke, and then John said, man, get that out of my face. Okay. And then, so I didn't think anything of it. I sat there. My, my head was in a forward position. I didn't look to the right. I didn't look to the left. I just sat there, and I just waited. Okay. After I didn't hear him at all, I finally looked to the right, and when I looked to the right, I didn't see him, nor did I hear him anymore. Hmm. I thought that it was a little odd, but I didn't, I didn't get alarmed because I thought maybe he went back to the restaurant. Maybe he had left something. And I sat there for a few seconds, and then I... When I didn't hear his voice, I turned to my left, and when I saw this man leaving from our location, walking away from the car, but he wasn't just walking away from the car, he had a 12-gauge shotgun. Wow, okay. And when I saw that, I just put it all together. Man, get that out of my face, pow. And then the silence, I knew that John had been shot. Okay. So did you jump out of the car, or what did you do? Yes, the moment I put it all together, I opened up my car door, and when I opened up the car door, this man heard my, my door open. He robotically turned around, looked in my direction, and he just stood there as if he was scanning the parking lot. Well, not as if, but he was scanning the parking lot, mm -hmm. looking. And I ducked, and when I ducked, all I could do was cry out, and I was just saying, He's going to kill me. He's going to kill me. I can identify him. He can, he's going to kill me. And I was just cry, crying and just shaking, you know. And when he didn't see me or hear me because I was ducking, but my eye was on him, he turned back around and he started walking away from the scene. And now he's shooting up in the air. And I can hear the gunshots going off round after round. And I knew then it was my opportunity to get out of the car. And I jumped out of the car, ran over to the passenger side. And when I did, my husband was laying flat on his back. His face was disfigured. It was like hamburger meat on the ground, on the pavement. Mm. And all I could see was his juggler vein pumping. His eyes were closed. And uh, I knew that if I did not run and get help, that he would not make it. And unfortunately, we know that John did not make it. And Aaron Dunn went on to kill, he killed two people that night and wounded seven other people as he went on this shooting spree across Sacramento. I understand he had a satanic Bible in his car, blasting his music and having his shotgun and just shooting randomly and crazy, just acting crazy and uh, shooting at anyone that he could. And his deal was to take whomever out he could that night, correct? Yes, he... He, he also, well, yes, he, he wanted to kill police, the police officers, and that's, you know, he started shooting, and he shoot at, shot at the police officers. Um, but any, anybody, anybody that got in his path, he was going to shoot them, yes, anybody in his path. But he also wanted to die that night. Mm -hmm. um, we believe that he wanted to die by cop. He wanted the cops to shoot him and kill him, and they did. They shot him five times. He flatlined. He went down, but the ambulance revived him, mm -hmm. and two operations later, he lived. Okay. And we're, we're, we're going to be wrapping up a little bit here, but, uh, Karen, you went on to write your book, and uh, I just want to touch bases really quickly because I don't have a lot of time left, and uh, Laura may have one question for you. I'm not sure, but uh, I wanted to get to the point, too, that uh, not only did you deal with your husband being murdered and you're sitting in the car and not even known that he, knowing that he was shot in the face, uh, you also went through an issue with the uh, funeral arrangements, if I understand correctly. And if you can tell us oh, that real briefly. Man, yes, I did, Rhonda. It was, I, it was so surreal. I thought I was actually watching a soap opera. I thought I was watching a movie because of all of the things that happened after. Mm -hmm. I was there, present physically, but mentally and emotionally, I had checked out. And the only time I would come would, would be when things had to get done, when things had to, had to happen.